Today on Drawly, we are talking about easily injecting story into your drawings. Ooh, hey, I'm Ben, and I'm Abby. We are self-taught artists documenting our journey of learning to draw, which is of course better with friends. So click that subscribe button if you're new around here, and share your artwork on Instagram with hashtag Drawly. All right, Abby. So we're talking about easily injecting story into your drawings. There's a few different ways you can go about that process. However, we're talking about easy. We want easy ways. If you're sitting here drawing a portrait and having a lot of fun working on that face, and then when you just got a boring background on that, where's the story? Right, the what's story happening? Who are they? Where are <laughs> they? What's going on? Who are they? Where are they? Why are they? How are they? How are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> So what made me think of this this week was when you showed me this finished portrait and I saw the chain link fence that you'd painted behind this girl and it immediately made me think, oh wow, this isn't just a portrait of a girl, this is a portrait of a girl who is somewhere. Ooh. You know, she's got tangible pieces of the world near her. It's just a chain link fence, but it's, and this being subjective, my mind went to like, oh, she's like at a baseball field. Your brain filled in the gaps. And my brain created filled that in the gaps, you. exactly. And it elevated this piece to more Ooh. than just a portrait, but a portrait of a person with a story and a background and a place. And I was really struck by that. Yeah, story is something that we haven't really talked a lot about on Drawbly because as we're going through learning, you know, being self-taught artists and learning how to do all these different technical aspects of drawing and art, story is something that we haven't talked about because we've been trying to figure out a million other things. We've talked about wanting to be able to create environment for our characters that we draw. Yes. However, that we, you know, when we have attempted that, it's this own monumental undertaking of being able to create landscapes and settings and woods that often become their own like subject, you know, like let alone try to put some into a full finished environment so when you showed me this picture with the chain link fence I thought wow that was so easy you said such that, a simple way to go about it right that fence didn't take you more than like five minutes to create and yeah, yet for me cool. it just it really put this person in a place um, which just made it so much more than just a portrait of somebody looking off to the side. So we were going to talk about today and try to brainstorm and generate other ideas of how you can easily uh, incorporate a little bit of story into your portraits just to bring them a, a little more interest. In yeah, I, I really think that there are you know a few different easy ways to do that and I think most of them you can very quickly achieve with a simple background. So if you are mainly focusing on portraits, which is kind of what we've been doing for a little while mm -hmm. here, uh, you know, we create the portrait, it's just there with a blank background or maybe some simple texture. I think by taking that background and just giving it a little more, just the tiniest amount more, you can really elevate your piece. Yeah. Here I did some simple like diagonal lines and they created this whole effect where it's like, oh, it's a chain link fence. She's at a baseball game, she's mm -hmm. at, you know, school or she's wherever. She's at a park, yeah. It changed a lot about who we think she is versus just looking at her. Um, so where might some, what might some other like simple backgrounds be that you feel it could be, give a sense of easily identifiable place? Yeah, I saw this, um, this like little mini tutorial while I was scrolling on uh, Instagram the other day, or maybe TikTok. Either way, I sent it to you, but it's just a super simple, you know, creating of these block shapes in the background. They created uh, mainly like really dark shapes, very neutral shapes, and then tiny blocks of bright colors to represent lights. And then they blurred it all and it looked like a night city, like a mm -hmm. nightscape or this mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm. It was crazy simple. I'll maybe show a little bit of it up here on screen so you guys can get an idea. But I was um, you know, watching them create it and I was like, wow, this looks like really simplistic. What are they even making? And then they like blurred at the end. I'm like, oh, hmm. very cool. Mm -hmm. So an easy like night cityscape that conveys a sense of like- Especially with a portrait. Yeah. Night. Very simplistic. I think you could get away with like very minimal shapes yeah, in the background. Yeah, because I would want it to be something that I could create very quickly because if I'm putting all my energy and available like 
space into the portrait, and by that space I mean just my attention span for what it is, then I don't want to spend a lot of time on the background necessarily at this stage. Um, I just want to put something in kind of quickly to elevate this without having the background be its own whole portrait piece that I have to spend another three to four hours uh, putting together. So I like that idea of the cityscape. I think you could also do, so because with a portrait specifically, you're honed in on the face, right? It's mm -hmm. a, you know, that is the main focus. You're not ha typically having a full figure with, you know, much of the focus up on the face unless you're doing something with lighting. Mm -hmm. But you could do a really simplistic background, texture it, try to make it look like a, a concrete wall like or something. Wall. Throw a simple drop shadow on the back of that wall mm -hmm. from your character, duplicate it, make it black, fade it out, drop shadow. Yeah. Easy peasy. Little graffiti. Little graffiti. You don't even Spray have to graffiti. Brushes. Yeah. <laughs> Just something back there. It says, who am I? Where am I? I think uh, that is a really simplistic way that I've seen many times that's very successful. Mm -hmm. Although I haven't implemented many times myself. I think like, if you go back through our drawly vids, I've done it a couple times, but definitely a really quick and easy way to go about it. Mm -hmm. I think you can also indicate a lot of these story elements with, um, specifically with lighting, like by doing some different effects, you could, you know, with more colorful lighting, you could maybe look at, make it look like they're at a club or something. Yes. Like there's a lot of different things you can do with lighting. That's true. My reservation there would be with that, I might have to start creating lighting that's not present in the reference. And yeah. I love to play with that, but I'm like, how skilled am I at that? Like, oh, but no, that'd be really fun too as well. But in terms of like an easy thing, what we're looking for is more of the stuff that you can just kind of throw on at the end where you're like, oh, I really like this portrait, but I wish it had just that little extra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More than just like a shape or a square or a circle behind them, <laughs> but like a place. Yeah, you gotta love the the classic square background, a colorful square block. There's nothing wrong with character. it. It does a lot to, you know, highlight a piece and make it look cohesive and framed. It, it can actually uh, frame a piece pretty well. Because mm -hmm. framing is an important part of artwork. I don't think we've really ever talked about that much. Uh, but if you ever go to like a traditional art class, you know, at the very end, they throw like a little black paper frame over your work and you're like, oh my gosh, it looks so professional now. Ooh, the frame. Mm, that's an interesting topic. Mm -hmm. The actual physical frame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not something that I think about uh, too much in the digital space, but I have seen some artists very successfully create like framing for digital pieces. Mm -hmm. And it does definitely give it, you know, uh, a different a different vibe, a different effect. Hmm, I'm gonna start thinking about that with my works, like planning that in, like, okay, it's not done until put the frame on. Yeah, what do you actually think of this piece since we haven't really talked about it much? Oh, I like it. I am still perpetually drawn to your very clean graphic style. You don't get bogged down in muddiness like I do. Um, and I really appreciate that. Um, oh, I, I get I get muddy, but I'm trying to control the mud a yeah. little a little more lately. Yeah, trying, trying. No, I'm trying to. It's it's just hard. I think having a really clear set of steps that you flow through in terms of like base color, shadow, highlight, you know, extra ambient occlusion, whatever. Having those really solid steps, I think, helps a lot. It's helping, yeah. It hasn't gotten me totally clear yet, but bearing those in mind has made it less muddy than it used to be. I'll get there. <laughs> and you've kind of gotten there already. I feel like I don't detect a lot of mud in this at all. I think there's some sketchy elements that are really fun, uh, like under her eyes that you still have the hatching in there, which yes. Which I'm getting you, rid of. you do get rid of those. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm still, oh man. I, I've been drawing a lot lately, specifically drawing, uh, which might sound funny to say, but we paint a lot. But drawing is just like that first step, that beginning step. The so lines. I've, right, the lines. I've been trying to work on that a lot more lately because up to this point, I've been really bad at lines. And it's something that I want to get better at because it's the foundation of everything that you do moving forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, that is something that I have really tried to focus on in my career as a digital sculptor is the early stage, the foundation, all about fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I've had, you know, in my opinion, a pretty rapid uh, gain in skill in the sculpting world. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 
what I'm kind of starting to focus on a little more here with drawing. Hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree that that's a very important part of what we're doing and an important part of our eventual success will have been our focus on the fundamentals. I, I don't know, I feel like if you look back through drawably from the very beginning to to like where we are now, mm -hmm. I think we've improved pretty quickly. Yeah, like, I think so. It's it's easy to look at this if you're brand new or maybe you've just been here for a little, for a little while and be like, oh yeah, that's you know that's cool or maybe it's not amazing, right? But like if you look back even six months or a year ago, mm -hmm. you're like, whoa, what the heck? Like holy cow, they've gotten so much better. It's insane. Yeah. And I I really just attribute that to consistency. To yes. How consistent we've been with you know doing these every week. That's three videos at every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, we're here. We're posting. We're like, we were drawing this week. How about you? Yeah, how about you? Oh my gosh. Pull, pulls out my uh, magnifying glass. <laughs> hey, what audience. You? you say you want to learn to draw, and you can with what time <laughs> you have. What do you think of this finished piece? I really like it. Like it it said, could be better. It, it could be, but I think you stopped it at a good point where you kind of were starting to brush your skill ceiling and not that this is exactly your skill ceiling. Brush my skill ceiling? Yeah, really? brushing it. Oh, with like a paintbrush, ha ha ha. Yeah, very funny pun. Um, <laughs> and that's a great place to call a piece finished for the day is to say, you know what, this has been, I've, I've pushed on that a little bit, my best abilities. I'm not gonna just noodle this into infinity. I'm gonna say, hey, it's done and I, I'm pleased with what I've produced here. So good job. Thanks. You're welcome. I, I did noodle it though. You did? <laughs> I, did I came back time. to it uh, like four days later and I was like, I'm going to do more to this. Yeah. And then I did nothing to it. I was like, excellent, excellent. Just excellent. tiny excellent. little modifications. Yes. And if you would like to do some tiny little modifications, click that like and subscribe button. And share your work on Instagram with hashtag Drawbly because drawing is better with friends. And this is the part where we say Goodbye. Goomba. Noodles. That's well, yeah, what we what you... had for dinner oh. last night. Oh my god, we have noodle leftovers. We and do. it's not just noodles. Like, don't. Everybody listening is like, they just eat plain noodles. I mean, sometimes. Yeah, we don't even cook them. We're just like, crunch, <laughs> crunch. When I was little, that was my little waiting for That's, lunch to be done don't snack. Ad, don't admit that to the public. I'll Abby. admit whatever I want to the public. <laughs> Hello, public. <laughs>